Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying an Atlantic salmon pattern called the Nimbus. This pattern was created by Jeff Piercy of Newfoundland and Labrador and it is an amazing pattern on a lot of our rivers. So without further ado, let's get on into it. So today we're going to be tying our Nimbus on a number 6 Partridge N2. This is the low water hook. And I'm just using uh, UTC 70 in a black to start. <clears throat> I can almost promise you right now that this is not going to be as nice as uh, the originator ties of the pattern ties their flies and. Uh, that's just the way it goes. I uh, I won't be able to touch it. Um, Jeff Piercy ties a really nice wet fly, and to be honest, my wet fly game is not really up to snuff. So we're going to start off with a gold uni in a number 16. It's a size I like to use for mylar when it comes to doing the tags. And I'm doing this at an angle that is extremely hard for me to tie wet flies. Usually I have my vise tipped up like this and I'm kind of looking at it um, side on. So I may still have to do that throughout the video and I apologize for that. Now we're just going to make some space to accommodate for the butt. <clears throat> so the pattern calls for uh, a, f a flow uh, green. So like I'm going to use a chartreuse. That's about as close as I got. That's the other thing about this pattern too. Uh, not this material here we're talking about, but uh, we're going to be getting into using some guinea fowl and stuff and. I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, guinea fowl is pretty much my kryptonite. Can't seem to get it right when I'm using it, but uh, I'm not one to shy away from the challenge either. And also this pattern calls for a uh, purple antron body. And I have some glow bright antron there, yarn, and it's really not my favorite stuff to work with. So, this will give you the idea of how to tie the fly, but you guys should uh, be able to do a better job than me at it. So, I'm just bringing that back over. If you've seen in previous videos, that just protects the butt, keeps it from coming out. All right, I'm going to use a uh, red, dyed red uh, GP Chris. And I just want to prep that and all I do there is I basically just hold on to the very tips and I just kind of peel everything else back. And sorry guys, I'm going to have to turn on this one to get it the way I want. I'd love to be able to film uh, Jeff Piercy tying this fly. I'm sure it, uh, it would look really good. Jeff's an amazing tire. Mostly everything that I see him produce and post up online is just stellar work. I think that'll do. So for the ribs we're going to be using uh, gold oval.
and sometimes I'll put my oval when I'm laying it down I'll put it on the bottom just to create a little bit more girth on the body but uh, the, end, the, the yarn that I'm going to be using for this is so large as it is that I'm kind of placing my oval on the side and tying it in on the side so it doesn't create too much like on top and below uh, girth on the body. My first experience with this pattern was only a couple of years ago on the Humber River and uh, wow, it is definitely a winner. All right. So here goes nothing. This is what we're using today. We're using the Glow Bright brand of this and um, I'm really hoping that you can get thinner stuff. Unfortunately, this is all I have at my disposal here, so that's what I'm using. I tried pulling it apart. That doesn't work very well. So the body's going to be thick, but maybe pretty appropriate for how some people would like to tie this. Uh, I usually tie my wet fly bodies fairly skinny. And sorry, I gotta keep kind of turning this and looking at it. And just as I'm going, I'm just kind of looking on top and making sure there's not too much uh, bumps kind of sticking out. We try to smooth that over. If you see one, I'm just gonna hold my tail in place while I come back and wrap here. And that just kind of keeps it where it's supposed to be. so far the worst is yet to come that throat is gonna kill me all right I'm sweating <laughs> it's not terrible and I'm gonna wrap over my rib now We got one too many rib. Fish aren't going to like that. Six ribs on that side instead of five. Just as well throw that one away. All right. So for the throat on this, we're going to be using uh, two colors of guinea fowl, actually, as if one wasn't enough uh, for me to screw up. So we're going to be using an orange and then a blue over the orange. So, terrible with guinea fowl. I don't know if it's just the guinea fowl I've always used has not been the best to work with. But we'll do what we can here. And I just kind of roll that around in my fingers. And I put this in kind of size up where I want it, usually right to the end of my body is the way I like to tie in my throats. That is layer number one. I'm already not in love with the, the throat, but the camera's rolling, so we'll just continue on.
Next is our blue. I contacted uh, Jeff Piercy before um, tying this fly on camera and had a chat with him about the recipe. Uh, I had originally seen the recipe in um, Jacques Hero's uh, book on salmon flies. And uh, that's where I first tied it from. And Jeff confirmed that uh, the recipe is pretty accurate in that. So uh, that throat is not my favorite but oh, that's it you guys get the idea if you use guinea fowl better than I do your, your fly is going to look a lot better so I got some uh, goat fur that I'm almost running out of um, unfortunately some of the uh, fur on the top of this what I have left seems to have a lot of um, split ends and cracked off ends on it with broken tips and doesn't always look the nicest the fish don't care of course but since when do we tie flies for fish right so I'm just stacking that wings probably a little bit thicker than I would like I already kind of feel like the throat on this fly is already uh, pretty thick and it's going to be bulky in the head so and I just kind of measure up I want to be back here right to about the tip of my uh, pheasant crest so this just helps me kind of measure up where I want to cut at And sorry, I do need to keep this um, <laughs> tilted towards me for this part. All right. So uh, now I'm going to put just a tiny bit of cement there. Usually I use a bit of super glue, but the cement is here at my desk, so I'll use that. And all that does is just help hold that wing in a little bit. So the head turned out pretty ugly on this as well. Should have just started the video off with, hey, I'm going to tie a Nimbus. Uh, I apologize, Mr. Piercy, for butchering your fly and don't do what I do, everybody. All right, and we're pretty much done here now. Yeah. Something's going to go wrong, of course. I'm pretty negative today. I need to stop. All right, and all that's left is to put our first coast coat of uh, head cement on, which I just dropped. And uh, I'll probably follow this up with two or three more, depending on... Uh, what stuff I'm using here. I got some pretty watery stuff here now which is uh, I would always do my first coat with this anyway because you really want that first coat to penetrate your thread so watery stuff is good uh, but it's nice to follow up with a little bit thicker stuff it helps build that nice shiny head that we all kind of look to get. All right that is a Nimbus it was created by Jeff Piercy it's an excellent fly for our rivers uh, thank you all for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do so and if you don't really feel comfortable doing that either, that's totally cool. Just appreciate having you along. Until next time, stay safe.